Hello gamers around the world, I'm Spurkus and welcome to Game Breaking News, the show where you can get everything important that happened this week in the world of gaming. And we had a bunch of announcements this week already because the game companies are preparing for E3 and they want you to know what you can look forward to during E3 in the coming month. So obviously we had the teeny tiny Destiny 2 reveal this week and I will get to that in a minute. But first, I want to talk about things that I mentioned last week and for some we got additional information this week. So let's begin with one of the biggest games of this year, Assassin's Creed. I said biggest, not the best, biggest. So we had some more rumors from an anonymous 4chan users. So the following things are definite rumors. All right, rumors, 100% rumors. Okay, so according to that user, the leaked screenshot we had last week is part of the E3 presentation where you get to see sailing, the new weapons, new skills and discovery systems that will be also presented and also a target named the crocodile gets killed. Also, Ubisoft scratches the towers that you had to climb to reveal the map since the very first Assassin's Creed. Instead, you have an eagle of some sorts at your disposal to do that. While mitro transactions like in Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Rogue will be there again, there won't be a multiplayer or a companion app. The historic part of the game will play around 12 to 1400 before Christ, where also the battle between the Templars and the Assassins will get a higher focus. Also, the modern times will get a bigger focus as well, where you will be playing a already trained assassin, not like Desmond who was basically an idiot. The team gets to use the Animus 5.0 to get that far back in history, you know, more than 1000 years before Christ. Yet characters like Sean and Rebecca will also get a comeback. While seafaring will get also a comeback, there won't be any sea battles like in Black Flag. It's more like in The Witcher 3 where boats are just for transportation. Overall, the game is supposed to get an overall in combat and stealth mechanics and overall gameplay. While the AI is to become smarter and, you know, to encircle you better and to ambush you and to attack you actually. And also mechanics like losing your opponents while fleeing by getting into a crowd is also supposed to get some improvements. Meanwhile, the parkour elements were improved as well to make it overall more fun, whatever that means. Again, all I said up until now are just rumors. So the new Assassin's Creed might just be become the same shit as the years before. So we have to wait for E3 and there we get the presentation and then we can see if the rumors are true or not. Because rumors may be shit as well. Because last week we get rumors that Far Cry 5 will have a Western setting. And this week Giant Bomb got information from a source from Ubisoft that the Far Cry 5 will get a police setting where you're gonna hunt down some rebels in modern day Montana. So who knows if that's true, eh? It could be that, could be also the western setting, but one of these rumors will be wrong because I don't think that it's going to be a modern western rebel killing setting in Montana. I, I, I don't know. Alright, so from now on, there are no rumors in this episode anymore. Only facts and confirmed information. And you know what is confirmed information and facts? That's the Ubisoft Finance reports and what they tell to their investors because they can't lie there, at least they're not allowed to. So they stated that in 2017 and 18, we will see the exciting returns of Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, The Crew and South Park. So those aren't official announcements, yet this sentence confirms that all these games will be released in the current financial year of Ubisoft, which ends in March 2018, and that we will get to see a presentation and official announcement at this E3 as well. And personally, a new Assassin's Creed or a Far Cry, well, that's not much of a surprise, but a new The Crew, well, that I did not expect since it didn't have favorable reviews and the sales numbers couldn't have been better, in, if I recall correctly. But I guess Ubisoft still believes in the franchise. On the other hand, South Park Fractured But Holes was supposed to be released already last March, but it got delayed a couple of times now, until now because Ubisoft confirmed the new release date, which will be the 17th of October this year. Of course, I believe it when I see it, but I think that this date will be the real deal because it's actually quite far ahead down the road, so they have enough time to optimize it. And of course, I'm looking forward to it because the stick of truth was amazing and Fractured But Whole is still coming for PC, PS4 and Xbox One. Man, I personally think and hope that a Switch version where both games come at once will also become available at some point. But those are not the only Ubisoft games, especially the Tom Clancy games of recent months 
were a huge success. The combined player base of Tom Clancy's The Division, Rainbow Six and Ghost Recon Wildlands is 44 million. That's a growth rate of 150% in the past 18 months. So what else can we expect from Ubisoft? Well, I guess we will see that on the 12th of June at 1 p.m. Pacific time because that's when the Ubisoft press conference will be held. Also, Devolver Dig Digital announced that they will hold a press conference as well, but no specific time or date is known yet. Which means that we know all the important dates for the E3 press conferences. Moving on. Last week there were also rumors about the death of the Hitman series and a new Thief video game. Well, that completely turned around this week, because according to GameStar, the rights to the series stays with IO Interactive Studios when it will be sold from Square Enix to whoever buys it. Meanwhile, we know now that T5 is not in development, since IDOS head of studio David Anforsi tweeted that we should just forget about it. After that, the statement at the production firm that makes the Thief live action movie and that started the whole Thief 5 rumors, well, that thing got deleted. So no Thief 5 anytime soon. <laughs> what a shame. All right, Destiny 2. So we had a thorough presentation of the game this week in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, I was not invited. <laughs> I wonder why. Strange. Anyways, we did not only get the release date, which will be the 8th of the September, we also got a gameplay presentation and a bunch of games journalists were able to get their hands on a couple of hours of playtime. And the conclusion of that playtime was, though quite entertaining and fun to play with, it kind of feels similar to, you know, the previous one. So in other words, I guess that Bungie just basically slapped a bunch of new maps and skins and weapons and activities and that's it. But then again, what else can you expect from a FPS sequel, am I right? And that's exactly what we get from this game. We'll get new planets to play on and more gear to wear simultaneously. Well, the devs from Bungie love to point out that although this is a sequel, it's also an opportunity to start anew. Yeah, totally. I mean, a sequel is, is it's meant to do that, right? That's why Assassin's Creed, Call of Duty, all the Marvel movies and Transformer movies, they're just known for starting completely new. And it gets better every time, right? Yeah, totally. Anyway, what was revealed this week? Now your warlocks, titans and hunters get some super maneuvers. Also the tedious traveling between orbits to start an activity is gone and one new of these activities are adventures. Those adventures are short story missions that explain the destiny universe and some characters a bit more. But do destiny gamers really care about that? I mean as long as they can loot anything and say woohoo I bought the latest bungee game, they don't really give a red button by the game no matter what. Okay. Maybe there are some more reasons to buy the game, so um, let's see. It might be the new countdown mode. In this mode, a team of attackers have to plant a bomb in the base of a team of defenders. Wow, that's a groundbreaking new mode, I've never seen anything like that before. And since gamers are known to be social, they will be able to join clans in-game now to fight together and uh, who cares. Hmm. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but um, I did not really get hit by the hype train for Destiny or Destiny 2 by now, uh, but maybe it's different for you and you got a PC and you weren't able to play Destiny before, but that's supposed to change this time, because a PC version is coming with 4K support, unlimited frame rate and more. Like according to some NeoGAF rumors, also a cross save function between PC and PS4. But as always, there is a but, and that is the release date of the PC version is not known yet. It's only coming soon, quote unquote, at the moment. So it could be the 8th of September, but it's unlikely in my opinion. So what's the reason for the unknown date yet? Well, because the PC version is developed by Vicarious Visions and not Bungie. Now Bungie insists that they work closely with them, so this will be a full PC version and not just a PC port. Well, I guess we'll see that when the game will come out, just not at the 8th of September. Oh man, I gotta be honest with you people, I, I, I just did not get hooked with this reveal of Destiny 2. It seems that there's nothing that I haven't seen yet. Oh man, let's take a break. Let's take a short break by watching how a granny beats Chuck Norris. You're unbelievable! <laughs> Sweet 
mother of Chuck Norris. I, 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 I'm, I, I, Life is Strange will continue. Season 2 was confirmed this week and we won't see anything about that at E3. So there isn't much to talk about this anymore. So let's move on. Netflix is making a Witcher TV series, but unlike many would believe, it has nothing to do with the game series. Well, not exactly nothing since the game and the TV series are both based on the book series and the author of those books, Andrei Sapkowski, is some sort of a creative consultant of the TV series, I think. But CD Projekt Red is in no way affiliated with that series whatsoever. Except that the game's success is the only reason why anybody is doing another Witcher live action adaptation. Uh, another? Yes, because in 2000 there was already an attempt and that just got banged. Anyways, not much is really clear about the series. There are some capable and well-known producers behind it and some characters from the books will appear Yet, who will actually be the actors to play those characters and what character will be the main character and what the story will be about exactly, well, that's still unknown. So let's move on to Nintendo and, of course, the Switch. Good news, we already kind of suspected already. The Switch was the most successful console in the US in the month of April with 280,000 sold units. Meanwhile, there were 550 sold copies of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe within the first two days. So it comes to no surprise that more and more devs are jumping on that train like Deck 13 and their flat heroes. The game is already available on PC via early access and is supposed to get a full release also on consoles later this year. And it looks like the PS4 is the Internet Explorer in Elite Dangerous. Because finally, after three years on PC and two years on Xbox, a PS4 version is coming out on the 27th of June. That's about time. Now, I wonder if it also gets a PSVR support because Elite Dangerous VR, that's, that's something. Unfortunately, you need to pay the equivalent of a car to play that. So the alternative could be the newly announced Vive VR that is supported by Google's Daydream. So with this VR device, you can use VR without a phone or a computer next to it. How this is supposed to work and how much it will cost, well, that is unknown yet, but my guess is it's going to be cloud-based and um, hopefully we'll see some more at E3 this year. Or better yet, something much better than VR. Or or just VR, but more capable and more affordable, because uh, that's still kind of pricey. You know who doesn't have enough? Capcom, because they expect that the new Resident Evil will sell 10 million copies in its lifetime. Considering the fact that they missed their own target of 4 million copies in March by about 500,000 copies, it is still a long way to 10 million. But considering that Resident Evil 4, 5 and 6 sold 7 to 10 million copies across its complete lifetime, and its really complete lifetime, I would say that is this is not impossible because Resident Evil 7 is a great game and you should play it. Period. All right, before we wrap up this week with something stupid, we also had some more announcements this week. For starters, Formula One 2017 was announced this week and will come out on the 25th of August, including classic cars once again. Now, <laughs> that's not really much of an announcement or surprise because um, those games were coming out in the last couple of years. But there were also two announcements this week. And at least for me personally, I, I, I just can't wait to play these games. First, we got Pizza Connection 3, which is amazing. I played the game when I got Pizza Connection 2. The game was included for free in some games magazine back in the day. So it was already quite old then, but it was still fun and stupid and awesome. So in Pizza Connection 3, you play a mafia boss who tries to open a pizza food chain, but there are also some other families who try to do the same. So you have to use uh, marketing and um, create customer based products. So uh, pizzas and also, you know, play some rats and bombs into enemy restaurants. Can't wait to do that. Also, Harvest Moon Light of Hope was announced and it is coming for Nintendo Switch, which is awesome, PS4, which is great, and also PC, finally. Last year, Stardew Valley stormed the hearts of many Harvest Moon fans who were craving for a Harvest Moon like in the good old days, just like me. And Stardew Valley was just doing that. I was thank you for this. And Natsume promises that they want to go back to the roots again and they seem to have found out that there is actually a huge fan base outside of Nintendo handhelds because they were just producing bullshit 
for the Nintendo 3DS, mostly in the last couple of years. I could have told you that before, you idiots. Anyways, they said that we will get more information during E3, but we already know that the protagonist is some sort of a sailor and the the ship wrecks, so he gets stranded on next to a shitty little town with an old lighthouse and he wants to build up this lighthouse again. Now, this doesn't really sound that old school for Harvest Moon. True, yet the devs promise that all the stuff will be there, like farming and cattle and chicken and fishing and romancing and whatnot. I am for one am excited, mostly because it will also come out for PC and PS4, because that way they hopefully skip the whole DS bullshit of the last games and just, just look at Stardew Valley. This guy did the game right. Anyways, it's time to end the show with something stupid. And if it's not ass faced game stuff, it's jerk face game. So if you live in the UK now, you can pay a yearly subscription of 36 pounds a year to get an elite that's very important. Elite rewards card. Amazing. And what do you get? 10% per purchase of games, 4% in consoles and 2% in trade-ins and you'll get this in form of a reward points. The thing is, there is already a standard rewards card where you get 2% per purchase and 1% per trade-ins. So <laughs> this is obviously a bargain. I mean, all you have to do is just to buy a shit ton of games over the year from game directly and then you save like, I don't know, five pounds or something. Seriously, if you pay for that elite quote unquote reward scheme, you are damn stupid and you are the reason why the game industry is going down the drain. Period. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure to present you the game breaking news of this week. Please press the like button down below and put your thoughts on this week in gaming in the comment section down below. E3 is approaching and I can't wait to find out more about Harvest Moon. Oh yeah, Destiny 2 was uh, there too, right? Today. Oh well. Anyways, thank you. I'll see you next week with an all new game breaking news and a shit ton of news. See you then.